Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hi, and welcome to the Marketing Essentials Podcast. Our unique team helps small businesses grow by providing essential marketing expertise. Hello and welcome to the Marketing Essentials Podcast. My name is Bill Parmentier, W. Parmentier Photography. And I'm Justin Kerr of Justin Kerr Design. And I'm Alicia Piazza with Custom Marketing Solutions. And together we make up the, the Marketing, Marketing Essentials, Essentials team. team. We're getting it. We're getting it. Yeah. So today, what are we talking about, Alicia? We're here to talk today about four ways to get the most out of your Facebook ads. <laughs> so Facebook ads, if you or social media ads in general, if you have a social media channel for your business now, Organic reach is on the decline, and it's it's next to none. So what that means is if you have about 100 followers on your page, just for numbers sake, you reach like 5% of your followers with every post. So, wow, so that's 5 out of every 100 followers you have yeah. uh, might see it? <clears throat> or even less at times. So organic posting is pretty much, it's you still have to do it, but ads are one of the services we offer, and we see a lot of results with ads if they're done correctly. Mm-hmm. So one of my biggest things that I hear when I start talking to a new client or prospect is, oh, I tried Facebook ads and they did not work for me. And this is, you know, so today I'm going to sum up like four things that you can do to make sure that your Facebook ads, you're getting the most out of them and you're, you're using them properly because guys, Facebook ads do work when you do it right. So the four things that I kind of want to review today are the technical things that you know, some basic technical stuff um, for setting up your ads understanding your audience and having the right ad ad copy, top of funnel versus bottom of funnel, and the expectations and results you should have for your ad copy. And these four things are going to help you make sure that you're getting the most out of your Facebook ads. Why do I feel like there's going to be a lot of gym analogies in this one? Because you talked about, you know, it does work, but you have to, you know, it's like saying, hey, I have a gym membership. I went once, but I don't, I'm not in shape. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. You, you know, it, you, anybody can have a Facebook page, but if you're not running the ads properly, just like if you went to the if you didn't go to the gym properly, you're not going to see results, and that would include not going enough, or not using the equipment or the machines or exercising properly. So that's a, that's a good analogy. Yeah, I think that works. So the the first point, I'm just going to jump in real fast because I feel like I do have a lot to cover, and I have. Uh, talked about some of the stuff on previous podcasts, but the technical stuff. So real quick, some technical stuff. And I feel like a broken record when I go over this, but do not. So the first thing I want to say when you're boost or when you're setting up your paid ads on social media is do not boost posts. And you guys have probably heard me say this one before. Just a couple of times. Yep. But every time I get an email now that says, hey, people are looking at this post, you should boost it. I hear the little voice in my head. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. So Facebook like prompts you to boost posts. But the thing is, it's really not a good way to set up your Facebook advertising. So why does Facebook, never mind, that's probably something that we'll No, that's a great question. It's a gateway. It's like the gateway to Facebook ads because the boost button is really easy to use. So as a business owner, if you can set up an ad in like five minutes or less, that's a great way for Facebook to get your money. But it's just shot. Isn't it just shotgunning it out there? I mean, you right. can't. It's not really targeted. It's right. just. Yeah. So you have limited targeting. Um, use Business Manager, Ads Manager, which I've spoke about before in previous podcasts. But um, it will allow you to set up different objectives for your ads. So if you want to run traffic to your website, um, if you want engagement on a post, say you're doing like a contest, then you would want the engagement objective. If you're at the point where you can um, run conversion ads and get leads to your business um, landing page or on Facebook, then you can run those different objectives. As Justin mentioned, you can do more refined targeting when you use business manager or ads manager, and that allows you to do things like lookalike audiences where you can find similar people to your current audience. You can A-B split test ads, so you can have an ad running with different copy um, to see which one is going to do best. And you can also have more clear and transparent reporting such as click-through rates, um, reach and impressions, uh, your frequency, relevance score, how long people viewed a video for. All these things are only available if you go through Ads Manager or Business Manager. Not quite as, um, it's not the case when you boost. So just don't boost. 
Just well, do boost it. bad. I mean, you can boost, but you're, the money you're going to spend boosting your ad could probably be better spent doing what you just described, which is you know a paid Facebook ad mm-hmm. where you can really fine tune it to exactly the people that you want to reach. So it's like you could spend the same, well, you could spend a little bit and kind of spray and pray mm-hmm. that you reach the right people, or you can spend a little bit more and really know who you're reaching. Yep. Exactly. Um, I mean, you want to make sure you have, and I do talk a little bit about the budget and stuff, but um, using using the business manager, you're just going to be able to have that refined uh, report and the refined audience in just a more transparent kind of uh, setup to what your ads are doing for you. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. It makes, makes total sense. That's, okay. uh, I, you know, it's difficult sometimes to be the an expert in what you do because you understand it. And so I'm just trying to dumb it down for someone like myself yeah. no, <laughs> to I, make yeah. sure that I get it because, you know, there's a lot of moving parts here and, you know, you, you want to get the most for what you're investing. Right. And I do have, we do have a podcast where I went through setting up an ad in business manager. It's not as scary as it sounds. So I'll make sure when we, you know, are posting this podcast to link back to the other podcast Yes, and yes. lead you down a nice rabbit hole of Facebook advertising. Mm-hmm. So make sure you have a few hours. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you got to be in the treadmill <laughs> you know a long time. Come on. We've all done it. Come on, face it. We've been on like YouTube and you watch one video and then the next one. Oh, and yeah. Then the next yeah. One. yeah. Oh, this is just 10 minutes. Yeah, Three I, hours later. I did that yesterday. I had some, um. some editing I had to do and I started <laughs> watching some some music video for some, I don't even remember what it was, like an 80s music video. Mm-hmm. And then I started listening to more. And then and also and the thing you know, you're buying 80s clothes on Amazon. Right. I, still, I, still have, I don't <laughs> know. I was going to say I still have some, but no, that's not. Personally, I think cats on Roombas are the gateway drug. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, Russian yeah. dash camps. Oh, those are insane. <laughs> anyway, we just... Now everybody go Google that. Well, yeah, the Russian dash cams are basically these accidents. Just you see them on the dash cams where people are just crashing into oh. things left and right. It, anyway, Google okay. it. It'll give you something to, to waste the days with. Yeah, so... You can waste a full day easily. <laughs> so, Sorry, down the rabbit wait. hole. Wait, speaking of rabbit holes. And so I guess going back to the Facebook ads, <laughs> mm-hmm. the, the boosting is the number one mistake I see when a business says to me, I tried Facebook ads and it did not work for me. And so boosting. And then the second thing along with that technical stuff is the budget, which I'm not going to get too far into the budget because I, I do have another podcast as well that talks about, you know, spending um, how much you should be spending on your social media marketing. But just I do feel like these things need to be highlighted to get going here on the, you know, what's working and what doesn't work for Facebook ads. People either spend too little or they spend too much. So too little, like 20 bucks, and they expect it. I'm just like, well, what did you expect for 20 bucks? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, people expect the world for 20 bucks, but unfortunately you're not going to get that. You know? Like if you were doing any other type of media for $20, you wouldn't really get you far at all. You can't buy an ad in the newspaper for 20 bucks anymore. No, you, like five direct mail pieces get sent out. So, you know, you do need some type of a budget. While Facebook is free, you do need some type of a budget. On the flip side, um, too much would be if you're spending too much and you're not getting results and no it's not sustainable. So the, this next thing you're talking about, I just happen to see your notes because they're in front of me, but you're talking about the basics of ad copy. And I, I got to ask this question, and I'll ask it to you because obviously you know what you're talking about compared to me. <laughs> 20% text and always use an image and video if you can. Mm-hmm. Now, I've heard people who have tried to pa- uh, to put ads through in the past. As a matter of fact, I think on a, the Little Roadie Marketing Group, somebody the other day was talking about that, that they got their ad rejected because it had either too much text or not enough text or whatever it was. I don't exactly don't remember exactly what it was. Mm-hmm. So Facebook will actually reject your ads if, if it's not fit within a certain criteria. What exactly is that criteria? Mm-hmm. So I'll post some examples, some visuals to go along with this podcast. But the rule of thumb is if you have it, so you should always use an image if you're boosting or not boosting, but advertising Mm -hmm. or running a campaign. If not, use video, even better. But with an image, a lot of people will try, like, so say you're a restaurant and you have a menu. Put the whole menu on menu. That's all text. And Facebook doesn't like that. Oh, no. Facebook wants visual. Facebook wants things that are going to lend themselves to people interacting with them. And people are scrolling through the feed fast. So that that image needs to be 20% less, um, 20% or less 
taxed. So I saw an ad the other day. Um, it was a whole thing like flash sale, 20% off at our store with the customer's logo. No visual in the ad and whatsoever. It, made it, through? it did. Facebook will take your money, but what's going to happen if the ad doesn't get rejected, it's going to have a lower reach. Gotcha. So gotcha. what you know, what you could do for 50 bucks with a well designed ad versus an all text ad is just it's going you're going to see a difference. Sure, sure. I, I I never realized that, you know, we've talked in the past about, you know, fa- how how important it is to do a Facebook ad over organic reach, but mm-hmm. I never realized that there was criteria that was going to either set your ad in a good place to be seen or either get rejected or not seen at all, mm-hmm. you know, or seen very little. Now there are some exceptions like if you have a book cover or I believe like if it's um, there's a couple exceptions to the text rule, but the overall thing here is Facebook is making it kind of foolproof to make your ads something that are going to to garner like engagement and be visually mm-hmm. attractive. And so it's helping us out on our on its own by setting this rule up for us. And there is a tool you can use, which again I'll put that in the the links um, to test your ads before you run them. You will get a little notification from Facebook that your ad has too much text, but why not test it before you even get to that point? Sure, sure. So, and I'll show some examples of what is, you know, a good amount of text versus uh, too much. Great. So those are the basics of number way, number uh, one way for the technical stuff that people aren't getting the most out of their Facebook ads is using the boost button, not spending enough money, typically not spending enough, um, and setting the ad up incorrectly with mm. too much text or not a compelling image. And so the next stuff I want to get into, I think, takes a deeper dive. Say you had all these three, you know, these three bullet points correct. Um, the next couple points that I want to get into, take a deeper dive into really understanding your marketing. So this is the good stuff. So understanding your audience and having the right ad copy. This applies to everything, including Facebook. This includes like if you're doing, if you include your website, it includes if you have a brochure, it includes if you are doing direct mailers. And I think with Facebook, you know, it's really you can pretty much quickly get an ad campaign up there. Mm -hmm. So people tend to like throw something up there and they don't even take the time to go back to their marketing and think about who am I targeting? What are the personas? What are their pain points? What keeps them up at night? And how can I position my Facebook ads to speak to them? And so instead of doing like a broad campaign, say you want to reach women who have a newborn baby and their concerns are things like, you know, maybe it's safety for, you know, car seats or um, daycare. Maybe they're searching for a daycare that's nearby and offers flexible hours. And so instead of just doing a broad um, ad, like I'm a daycare and we're accepting applications, talk to those moms. You know, new moms researching daycare can be overwhelming. What is it that you're looking for? We offer flexible hours and whatever it may be that matters. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just kind of coming up with this off the top of my head. But if you look at your personas and you've really taken time to dig into these these uh, different buckets that you're targeting with your marketing. Okay, so so what's I'm sorry, back up a second. What's Mm -hmm. a persona specifically? Yeah, so a persona is if you look at your maybe like three three to five top types of clientele that your business services or provides um, product to, who are they, what are their age, their job titles, um, what are their hobbies, where do they live? And the biggest one to me is the pain points and the needs. Because once you understand who who they are, you can position your ad copy to speak to them directly. Gotcha. Interesting. Makes total sense to me. So <laughs> Justin's sitting over here taking notes. <laughs> no, 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 this is our after lunch podcast. If you, <laughs> so we're all. If, if it's making sense to me, it'll make sense to anybody. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, That's Justin Justin's is our, rule of thumb. Justin yeah. is our social media newbie, so <laughs> no, hey, well, he's, he's doing very well I, with it now. I still text Alicia sometimes and go, how do I tag somebody in a photo? <laughs> well, we, must were sitting, be, <laughs> we were sitting in a meeting not too long ago. You're like, how do I check in? Yeah. And it happens. So I'm a total newbie when it comes to this yeah, stuff. So all, I'm just, I'm soaking it all up. We all have to learn somewhere, sometime, right? It's true. It's so true. Next, and they can't see me nodding my head. I was just going to say, yes. we used to do video. We haven't been doing that for a right, while now. So. You gotta use your words, Justin. Okay. <laughs> anyway, where were we? So, yeah, personas are interesting because a lot of times businesses will say, well, everybody is my client. 
Yeah, but everybody but nobody is your client, basically, at that mm-hmm. point. And yeah. with social media, the targeting capabilities are insane. Now, they did scale back on some stuff, um, but you can target home, new homeowners. You can target moms of uh, teenage kids. You can, you can target... You go by age demographics. You can go by... Yeah, there's so much. Mm-hmm. Vegans, uh, people who have... Certain... Really? Vegan? You can separate it by vegans? Oh, yeah. I'm doing an ad right now for... And this isn't, no like, way. super... This isn't super like complex, but it's a restaurant that has a good vegan menu um, option and people don't know about it. So, you know, you go into Facebook and you type in vegetarianism, vegan, vegan awareness. They belong to different groups and you can target those people <clears throat> just because Facebook well, knows maybe. that they are. Um, Facebook knows all. Facebook knows. Yeah. And this is something, you know, we do for my own agency funnels. Uh, We don't just run a broad ad saying like, hey, your business needs leads. We can help you. We'll like segment to, hey, you know, solar solar uh, business owners. Are you having trouble generating digital leads? We can help your sales team by providing, you know, Mm -hmm. leads on a regular basis. Or if it's a dental practice, uh, speaking to the dental practice owners. Keeping your your chairs full, uh, keeping a steady flow of new patients for your dental practice, and so that's one of our personas. And that's so amazing we, how targeted you can get. You mm-hmm. know, most people at home don't know or at home or listen to the podcast don't don't know understand the whole thing about personas and mm-hmm. how does that relate to my business. So that's some pretty cool information. You know, if you haven't done it yet, because this this plays a part into all your marketing, I highly recommend doing a personas exercise. So you can work with an agency to do that. You can take some time to do it yourself, but it's going to help you set your marketing up, not only for Facebook where the targeting is available, but in other ways too. So maybe now you look at your advertising differently. If you're doing an ad in a, um, you know, a monthly publication that's local, does it reach a certain industry type or does it, does it tend to have a more female demographic readership? And so that way now you can change your message to not just be about you and what you do, but what you can do for them. Mm-hmm. And that's when people start to pay attention. Nice. So that's number two, um, not having your audiences set up on with your personas and then translating that to targeting people um, on Facebook. Or, yeah, I guess that would be the way to sum it up. Yeah, no, that sounds about right. All right. Number three. Number, I feel like we should be doing number three. Yeah. Bill, come up with some cool intro sounds. I'm going to have to now. Yeah. <laughs> Bill's our tech guy. Um, so top of funnel versus bottom of funnel. This is one of my favorites. First, you got to tell us what a funnel is. Yeah, I was yep. going to say, back up for us newbies here. So if you're in sales, you're probably um, used, and I'll drop an image. I have a lot of links and visuals to drop in for this podcast but if you had to visualize this if you're in sales you've probably seen it but a um a funnel is essentially taking someone from consideration and awareness to research and consideration to conversion if i had to sum that up so you see the top of the funnel is very very wide and like a funnel does it narrows down so everybody from consideration and awareness does not necessarily convert but it's pushing the people who are you know just expressing interest down to making that action that's actually going to convert them into being a customer or a client or whatever it is a purchase and your so everybody's funnel looks different but the general stages are pushing people down the funnel from awareness and consideration to research or awareness and in research i'm sorry no awareness to research to consideration or something along those lines to conversion and so top of funnel versus a bottom bottom of funnel. The messages in your ads can vary depending where someone is in the buyer's journey. So if someone's just starting out to research something, I had a great example of this the other day. A friend was talking to me about how he went to a, looked into uh, like I think refinancing or a mortgage thing. Um, I don't know. I'm not really good with that stuff. Like remortgaging or refinancing. Refinancing probably something I guess would be like the best that. word for it, yeah. But he went to a website, you know, he was starting out at the top of funnel. He was researching this, looking to what his options were, and he filled out a form to get more information. And before he knows it, his phone is ringing (laughs) and ringing and ringing. And he's getting these sales calls. Now, the thing is, he's not at the middle of funnel or bottom of funnel. He's not ready to talk to somebody. So he keeps just sending these people to voicemail Mm -hmm. and, and blocking the numbers. So this is a classic example of where we have jumped the gun on top of funnel. Someone is not ready to make that decision, that uh, purchase, or take that action 
and we have not given them enough content or the right ad to to kind of push them down the funnel. So a proper way to go about this is he came to the website first time and digitally there's ways to um, segment that out and re you know retarget him with content that's educational you know five things yeah, you need to know about point. remortgaging your home um here's some of the things to look out for when you're remortgaging your home mm-hmm. um whatever it may be but that's content that is where he is at in the buyer stage and then as you know he's taking action clicking on this content becoming more immersed in the the stages of becoming ready to make a purchase we put that conversion ad out there are you ready to talk to a loan officer mm-hmm. or whatever that conversion may yeah, be? That makes much more sense because otherwise you're just chasing your tail as a business. If you're going after every top of funnel thing, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, wait a minute, you're going to tick off your clients, if any of your possible clients. Exactly. And th- this happened to me too. Like I was researching like review um, automation software mm-hmm. and I had filled something out and never really got a lot of supporting info from the company. And all of a sudden they're calling me every single mm-hmm. day and I wasn't ready to talk to them I hadn't understood like stood their product at that point I wanted to do the research on my own mm-hmm. I wasn't ready to speak with somebody I wasn't ready to be sold to yeah I had something similar myself I was put my ad up on a, a, a company website uh, I'm not going to say the name but it rhymes with help <laughs> 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 and for months afterwards I got phone call after phone call after mm-hmm. phone call and the funny thing is after after they get a new account exec Mm-hmm. The phone calls start all over again. Yeah. I guess they must have a high turnover. But anyway, that's... Because your name is recorded in a CRM somewhere, and they're like training these people just call until you get them on the phone. Yeah. And old sales techniques are not going to work in a new digital age. So what would have worked better is maybe if they had um, targeted you on Facebook with, hey, here's a webinar on how local businesses are using help dot com <laughs> to <laughs> grow their revenue. We just started a new website. Does yeah. Anyone <laughs> so Let tap me look o- this up on Yugle. <laughs> Yugle. <laughs> so top of funnel stuff, guys, are low ass and in information that the person needs at that stage. So introductions to your company, giveaways, um, webinars could be something. Uh, and ask to join a Facebook group that has tremendous value to that user, a checklist or content that could be given away, something that that user at the top of funnel would be interested in. It's a low ask. You're, you know, to ask someone to jump on the phone with you or you come to a meeting, it's like asking to get married before you go on a date. Yeah, that's kind of backwards, ain't it? Right. You got you to gotta court the... The relationship. Yeah. Courting. Yeah. That courting. is a term, right? So this is... Yeah, yeah. Us old guys know that one. Courting. Okay. Uh, s- if, if I'm understanding this correctly, the, the sales funnel is very much like lead nurturing. Oh, yeah. T- hand in hand. Same thing. Yep. Okay. Yeah, there, there are several terms for it, and there's definitely different funnels out there, but the basic premise is nurturing that lead until they're ready they're at the point to take action. And every sales funnel, the length of it is different. So if you're, you know, doing if you're in an industry that requires the consumer to do a lot of research, then that's gonna take more nurturing versus I think we've spoken about this in the past, if you're a restaurant and somebody's gonna go on help, help.com, yelp.com. <laughs> And they're going to look something up and they're going to make their conversion that night. It's yeah. going to take a couple right. hours maybe. But um, the, the, so I guess the cycle, the length of the customer journey varies. Well, I think it depends on the price point. Mm-hmm. Um, Directly related to, yep. I worked on a website once for a marketing agency and their niche was they helped businesses that were uh, classified as considered purchase mm-hmm. businesses. So big ticket items. Uh, you know, houses, cars, um, you know, sort of things that you would really have to think about. Have to purchase. think about, yeah. but you know, versus oh, where do you want to eat tonight? Eh, let's look at our free reviews. Okay, we'll go here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And so they were helping these businesses that you know were offering considered purchase either services or products uh, better market themselves because the nurturing uh, timeline or the funnel was much longer. And people were spending a lot more time in research. Yeah, they, and here I am making yeah. hand gestures. Like so you can see that. <laughs> so I, I can see that makes a lot of sense. You know, it's you, you, 
one funnel isn't going to fit everybody. No. Yeah, and think so think about yourself as a consumer, how you naturally act and go through stages when you are making purchasing decisions. And I think one of our former guests, Bob Salvis, he said it way better than I could, but if you wouldn't want to be marketed to like that, then why would you market to other people like that? Yeah, he, he, he made a comment, and, and I think on the podcast, about dog food, how he got a, a, a mailer for dog food, and he doesn't even own a dog. Yeah, or like your phone <laughs> right. is ringing, yeah. and you've never, you know, you're getting cold calls for a company that you're not really that interested in. in. So. If you wouldn't want to be pursued or sold to or marketed to like that, then don't do that for your company. Mm-hmm. And we, oh, I feel like a lot of businesses forget about setting up content that's relevant to the user with the right message at the right time. Yeah, they spray and hope, basically. They're just throwing things out there and hoping somebody will take the bait, so to speak. Or mm-hmm. I had to use the word bait, but, you know, just jump on what they're offering. Yeah. You know, uh, targeted marketing is important. But it's even more important that you know who your client is, like you said, going back to the persona thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not there yet, but I'm already getting like AARP letters in the mail. And it's like, dude, I'm not there for another 10 years. <laughs> They're <laughs> nurturing you <laughs> for a while. And my wife laughs because she's never gotten one. And she's a, she's a few years older than I am. And I'm just like, why am I getting this? Yeah, you no, guys have got the wrong guy. Well, uh, no, at some point you're going to start thinking, you know, some of the stuff I've been reading from them is starting to make sense. <laughs> and they, they're nurturing you. Oh, is that what it is? They're, they're nurturing you. They, they oh, yeah. Because I'm getting the same things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, I just figured it was a little young. Right? What, Whatever. Don't why don't we talk about the, the fourth Final, item yeah. here, which is expectations and results. Yeah. So I guess to Keep sum it too. up, the fourth thing that I see businesses do incorrectly And while this is a reason why they're not getting a lot out of their Facebook ads is because they haven't really set up a way to track the campaign. They don't have like a clear kind of, I guess, their KPIs, which is a fancy term for goal tracking, um, key performance indicators. They don't have a way of quantifying results or tracking KPIs and seeing what's working. So if you're just starting with Facebook ads, and you say you did everything else right, but you still didn't get um, new business or a, a direct client from that campaign, then maybe you didn't set up your expectations correctly. Did you first need to get people through to your website and then kind of push them down the funnel? So a lot of people think I'm just going to do one Facebook ad for whatever amount of money and budget is something I've, I can, you know, we talk about on other podcasts, but they do this one Facebook ad and they expect it to get, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of new clients. And that's just not realistic. Oh, man. There goes my whole advertising idea. Yeah. So, and, <laughs> But the thing is, you can, if you quantify, like, this is how much a new customer is worth to you. And this is what the competition is like on Facebook. And if you can come up with those um, targeted ads that are really going to speak to the, the user then, you know, your, the level of results that you get will increase. But right. And, and, and that's going to change for um, each person, too, because a company that's selling widgets, you know, small $2 items, mm-hmm. their, their cost per client is going to be a lot lower than, say, somebody that's selling RVs mm-hmm. at, you know, at $75,000 or $100,000 or what. I don't know how much an RV goes for nowadays, but they may be willing to pay a little bit more per click and per pickup than... Right. So... Yeah, so you just have to kind of set your expectations, which that one is probably the trickiest because if you have not done Facebook marketing in the past, you really probably, you don't have anything else to compare it to. Um, The closest thing you could compare it to is your other digital marketing strategies. So if you've run like a Google AdWords campaign or any type of inbound and content marketing, then with your Facebook ads, you would have somewhat of a benchmarker to see you know, what your conversion rates are online sure, sure. and what your uh, cost per lead is and things like that. But, you know, Facebook works really, really well, but you have to be willing to kind of set the expectations. So, for example, if you are a, we're running a campaign right now for a loyalty program for a restaurant, and if you sign up, you get a $10 gift card. So mm-hmm. they're giving a lot away, but in return, they're asking for something. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the leads on that are like a dollar a piece or less, but they're sure. giving something away yeah. and it's a loyalty program. So that's kind of a low ask. 
Um, on the flip side, if you're like a home services industry, say for instance, you're doing, um, you know, a home evaluation on en- like an energy audit. Mm-hmm. That's a big ask to have someone sign up for an appointment and have someone come into the house and do like a whole energy audit yeah. for you, especially if it costs money, if it's not a free audit. Mm-hmm. So you have to say, you know, what is it worth it to me to get this new lead? What What is the conversion rate in my other marketing? How much is a new lead worth? How much is a new customer work? Mm-hmm. So I guess in summary for expectations and results, just be aware of your ask. And just be aware of, you know, being reasonable and realistic. One is the technical stuff. So no boosting, Mm -mm. know your budget Mm -hmm. and the basics of ad copy, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the next one, two, understanding your audience and having the right ad copy, which obviously we just talked about. So in other words, knowing what the personas are, Mm -hmm. who's your target audience, Uh, the pain points for them and so on and so forth. What's number three here? Third is understanding where your customer is in the customer journey. So top of funnel funnel. Mm -hmm. versus bottom of funnel. Don't put a bottom of funnel big ask message to somebody who has never heard of your brand before. Exactly, because you're just starting off wrong. And then finally, make sure your expectations and uh, match your results, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I think this, again, is the most difficult one because if you haven't done Facebook ads, you really don't know what to expect. Exactly. But if you get those first three right, you can expect more, basically. Yeah, and, yeah. but it's a, it's a time thing. It's mm-hmm. like you said earlier, you can't expect to, to place one ad, even if you put a couple hundred dollars into it or more. Mm-hmm. One ad may not be enough to, to, to get a return on investment for you. It may mm-hmm. be multiple ads over the course of multiple months. Right, um, right. And then you have to make sure it's sustainable, but at the same time, you know, a, a couple bucks here and there and not having your marketing messages aligned with, with the personas. Those expectations can just, you can... You might as well throw them out the window, basically. <laughs> you're not going to get anywhere with it. So I think, you know, and in, in to kind of sum it up, um, I'll post the, the, whole, the whole list and you can kind of like make a checklist for you guys so that you can check off when you're sending up your ads if you've been able to. That'd be great. Nice checklist. Yeah, exactly. Because we want businesses to be able... My thing, so as an agency owner, I love social media, obviously, and I want to be able to help businesses grow with social media advertising because it can work and you know some people some businesses can afford to hire an agency however my goal is that every business should be able well i don't know about if i can help every business but but if you're trying to do this yourself you i just want to make sure that people realize the value of social media and being able to use it correctly absolutely absolutely so now it's time for our shameless plug as all usual, right. how we end all Start of our podcasts. Start us off there, Bill. Okay, so if you like what you hear and you want to hear a little bit more about podcasts, you can uh, reach us through the marketingessentialsteam.com website. We also have a Facebook page, Marketing Essentials Team. And you can also find us on iTunes under the Marketing and Essentials Team. Uh, you can subscribe there and uh, get our podcasts as soon as they come up. You get mm-hmm. a little notification. That's how I have it on my phone. It pops up. A little notification comes up as soon as... Uh, well, the latest podcast comes up, so it's pretty cool if, you, if you're like a lot of people and want to listen to it in the car. We also have, I'll let you talk a little bit about this, Alicia, but our special group that we have. All right, so the podcast aimed at giving you the most valuable marketing tips and advice that you can get for your local business. Um, in addition to that, we've created a Facebook group called Little Marketing, I'm sorry, Little Roadie Marketing Support Group. Now, this is a place, it's a private group, so you can ask to join, but this is a place where you can post your questions about uh, any type of marketing, not just social media. Um, It ranges from videography to photography to technical stuff. We have a whole bunch of local businesses in there and local marketing professionals who can help you answer your question. And it's free. Yeah, I love free. Well, except, anyway, yes, I mean, it's a a great... (laughs) Sorry. It's a great resource and it's, uh, you know, like I said, it's free and is going to um, be a place where you can be, have a sounding board. You know, there's a lot of businesses that are already attached to the to the group and a lot of them are willing to learn and help others. So mm-hmm. I guess that's what we have for, for today's podcast. And uh, I guess we can say goodbye and until next time. See until ya. next time.